Pi check your go 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 see say by this time of the year when we don't they do it we don't they either some people don't they either they pack themselves together or some people don't they unleash themselves come on to showcase the thing where they don't unravel or the thing where they don't decide to present to people. But right about now this bus up they will get a very cajad guest. Not be every day where they see this kind of festival so they will not go hold out for waist, hold out for neck, ask some better question because when it concerns security of Nigeria, whether you like or not, you and me, all of us together, would they involve in securing our nation. Now, inside the building, we get none other than one security practitioner, um, when a person, when a Sabinus for inside the profession. So, they say, he not join certain associations. And this association, now for the betterment of Nigeria, he be fellow for inside FIIPS, he also be fellow for inside FN. IIS and in the fellow for inside FICSS. It don't call be different awards based on the kind of experience we gather. And they say no matter how you talk rich, once elder elderly man don't tell you say make you sit down. In get reason why I tell you make you sit down. We get for inside our reading right now. We get none other than Chooks Maha will be security practitioner for inside the Wazubia TV premises. Good morning, welcome to the show. Uh, good morning good and morning. good morning to our viewers. Now, make we look at the security situation because you're a security practitioner and I know so you get over 15 years, uh, 20 years and more oh, experience <laughs> for inside of security for Nigeria and even beyond. Now, let's look at um, the security situation for Nigeria going even beyond 2019, going as far back as 2018 or even 2009, mm -hmm. when we know say, begin for security for Nigeria, we know say, begin time where once upon a time people feel sleep with their two eyes closed. Once upon a time for Nigeria, at least if you leave your Pikimi, you go play for outside, you know, say, uh, nothing good one. But now, present day, 2019, 2020, we see, say, even to sleep safe, people, they use their two eyes open to sleep. Looking at the security situation, the, the, in the miscommunication, there been a communication between the soldiers, the police, and other security agencies for our country. Um, we remember the case study of one particular billionaire kidnapper where police were actually babam for where he did. They tried to transport him, and in the, in the process of transporting him, soldiers bewailed them, and there were clashes. So the three police people, they actually died. Looking at that as a case study, um, how can we in our country, and even amongst the security agencies, how we fit to better and avoid situations like that? Well, um, first to start with, I don't know how to take knock this English well, well, but I have to speak regularly, regularly. <laughs> Very well. well um, <clears throat> um, I'm glad you mentioned the fact that, you know, practicing security is everybody's business and not just the business of one person. It's not just that of the president, the inspector general of police, uh, but it's meant to be yours, mine, and every other person doing uh, business. Let's start off with, um, the year 2019 was plagued with its own uphill and evil with security, in this particular case you mentioned, but let's go back a bit. At the point of independence, at the point of independence, security was something that people hardly spoke about. It was just a vocabulary that exists as a word, mm. but nobody really thought of it, gave it a second thought in particular. The only time is issue of insecurity started coming about was at the tail end of the Civil War. When we start having issues of you know breaking and entering houses, people were stealing and that. Because then in Lagos, I mean, I'm a Lagosian, I grew up here in Lagos, I was born here. You could sleep with your doors open, go to bed, forget the doors, shut the doors, mm -hmm. and nothing happens. But at the end of the Civil War, we start having a little bit of vandalism when they broke uh, into people's houses, ate your food, stole your headlamps or your trafficators. Then, that was in the very early 70s. As time went on, they went on to taking tires of cars. Mm. <laughs> and all they started evolving on. And don't forget, that was at the period of when we had Oyenusi, you know, the celebrated arm robber. And this came about because of the availability of arms mm. at the end of the Civil War. Guns were readily available. People killed for reasons unknown to them why they were killing. So why can't I kill to make some money for myself? That was the argument. The guns were there, and that's how the issue of armed banditry started in Nigeria. But I'm not going to take us back so much in the history because the only way we can attack the future is to look at the past, think from the present, and catapult into the future by way of planning. Now, we have three types of banditry here in this country. We have the local bandits within the local vicinity, within your neighborhood, uh, within the states. Then you have the national banditries that come from other neighboring states to come and perpetrate their evil and go back mm. with the loot. And the worst one, which to me is very insulting as a Nigerian, is the international banditry that come from outside Nigeria, our sister countries, come here, perpetrate their crime, put us in a state of upheaval, make us look so stupid, and they go away with our loot, spending our money. That's international banditry. Now, how can we tackle this vis-a-vis -vis what you just mentioned now? The truth of the matter here is, in Nigeria today, we don't have role models. Role models, in those days, we had names we could mention, I want to grow up to be like this, I want to grow up to be like that. Now in Nigeria, 
who are you going to tell your child or grandchild to grow up to be like? Because everybody has a little question mark here and there. So the truth is that society has now upheld and uphold and drawn closer into this syndrome of get rich quick, uh, get rich quick syndrome. However, you make your money, you make your money. Nobody asks questions. You make your money, they give you the front um, role there in the mosque, you give you the front chair in the church, you are celebrated in society, they give you all the whole chieftaincy titles. Nobody cares. Well, I, really, look, because we're not, yes, I agree with you, you talk. Say nobody, they won't know how you get they take money. make more no, money. No, you see, yes. You but see, I'm coming they, down to it now. I'm coming down to it now. Yeah. Yeah, you see, because we need to address these issues. Mm. If we start asking questions where you make your money, if society can begin to shun ill gotten wealth, now, there'll be no, um, what did I say? There'll be no push for youth, uh, youths now, including adults now, in wanting to request to get this money now. Now, it is so bad that if you don't have money, it's as if it's a curse. It's a sin to be poor mm. in this country. We don't have a system that takes care of the poor. We don't have a society that accepts the poor. You just have to be rich. When I mean rich, rich as in richy rich. The, the gap is widening between the rich and the poor. So now, people have started thinking, Going inward. Instead of them to be thinking positively, they are thinking neg negatively. How can I make money? And the only way and the easiest way to make money anywhere in the world is when there's a state of turmoil. That's why you see countries, I'm not going to mention any country now, you see countries now advocating for people to go into war. Because now when they go into war, they can spend money, security-wise. Mm. Nobody questions, nobody checks the issue of the security votes. It's a, and a place auditors don't go near to. <laughs> it's a progressive of whoever is spending money, spend as you wish. So they've now begun to ferment troubles. Now, it's very easy now to say, okay, what is happening in the country? Let's take, go back to this case in question now, uh, this issue of insurgency and kidnapping in this country, which is now the most lucrative form of crime in Nigeria. Oh, yeah. There's no need kidding ourselves or deceiving ourselves. That is what is going on. It's the thing that's giving us all the quakes and the shivers now. But while this is going on, some people are cashing in on it. Cashing in on it in the sense of they're not being patriotic in nature. Rather, they're making money on it and making themselves feel good and making the nation at large feel stupid, crazy, and blacklisted. Nigeria is among the countries that people say, oh, don't go near there. It's an unsafe country. And I tell them when I'm outside the country, Nigeria is safe, if not safer than your own country. It's the way we propagate our insecurity here that matters. Now, let's go into this particular case now. The issue of that incident, I, I, I was worried then when the police went there, they busted the crime, the criminal, they got him. And at the point he was being transported back to Abuja, they met their Waterloo. Now, what could have happened there is what I refer to as the politics of security versus the security of politics. <laughs> the interdepartmental relationship between the various security agencies is very poor. At the upper echelon, it's beautiful, or it looks beautiful. When Mr. President calls for all the service chiefs, the chief of army staff is there, chief of naval staff, air, uh, air staff is there, the IGP is there, uh, the director general of uh, DSS is there, they're all there, they shake hands, they drink, they mellow, everything's fine, at that level is beautiful. But this is not cascaded down the ladder to the rank and file of the various security agencies. And there's this rivalry that goes on amongst them. Who is more superior to who? On paper, they are all the same. But you see, there, are some, there have been more relevance in service over time ever since the independence of this country. Like I said, I don't want to mention which agency it is because on paper, they are all going to be the same. But at the level of when they meet with Mr. President or they have meetings with the various governors, they are all the same. But like I said, it's not cascaded down. So when they go back to the nitty gritty, this is where the problems come up. There was no interdependency in terms of relationship between the various security agencies. You say, look, I'm in town, I'm coming for social and so operation. Please, can your men, you know, accord me such respect? Can they give me that uh, relationship, cordiality, in the, making sure that I have a free flow of this operation? That wasn't mentioned. That wasn't done. In truth, should it be done? No. But in practice, I think there's nothing wrong by sharing information with other sister agencies. If that was done, I want to believe that could, wouldn't have, have, would have happened. But again, too, there are always black sheep everywhere. You could, you know, um, give out that information, and a black sheep in that other agency possibly could divulge this information to the kingpin. Because we found out in Nigeria over time that most of these kingpins, I'm talking of criminal okay, kingpins, yeah. have their contacts in various security Agencies. In other words, again, divulge, again, yes, they have moles. Yeah, yeah, they have moles in their backs. They have moles who divulge information and say, boy, they don't they come for you. And that is it. And I'm sure, possibly, I'm not saying that's the reason, possibly that could have been one of the reasons why. But now, 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 on Chooks Mahama, I might even start, I might also more, more enter the, the, the welfare of these security agencies. Now, looking at the people where they fight this bad hmm. war, the Kobuko Aram. 
at some point in time, uh, you're not a security pr practitioner, so yeah. you go, you, you, some of these things you go understand them, and you go come from a different point of view. At some point in time, when we know, say, some of these are soldiers, they then buy. The ones we buy, some of their families still today, all they speak, they never get certain um, benefits, benefits where yes. they're supposed to get. Yeah. Okay, more we won't leave the benefits. Even when they, they fight for the war, when they are in the middle of this gunfire, guag, guag, bas, bos, bos. A lot of them, they come outside and talk, say, our weapon, it be like Shakabola. Shakabula of 1940. You see, if you see the Shakabula, what is what they use? It's when, maybe 2021 Shakabula. <laughs> when they never release. When they never release. <laughs> yeah. So you come people with the one that say, this is with their Shakabula. Where are they getting their AK-47 for? You come like, so they use local gunpowder. This is why using the automated. So people, they wonder, say, who they sponsor these people? Are we saying that these people, nobody, our technocrats who we get for government, never still find out who they behind these people? Well, on a foreign counterpart, oh, on a local one, oh, we don't say collabo this somewhere. But yeah. why it be say our own soldiers never even get that manpower, the equipment where they need, we go fortify them to put these people to a halt. Okay, um, I'll answer it twofold. We need to tell ourselves some home truths. And one of the home truths we need to tell ourselves is that these people, Boko Haram, are no spirits. First and foremost, they are being sponsored by some persons, both locally and internationally. And there's no way our security agencies, especially the DSS, NIA, hmm. would not know who at least these people are. But the question is, is the man in office, when I mean man in office, the presidency, when I mean the presidency, I'm not talking of Mr. President himself. Who, presidency is involved, the involvement of everybody, everybody that is in that executive capacity. All these governors, including the president, the vice president, and all those people. Are they ready? Are they ready, you know, to step on people's um, uh, gods oh. and, of course, unleash them? In other words, do they have the governor's power to call a spade a spade and give us and take us to the right path? The truth of the matter, they know what to do, but they are not doing what they are doing, first and foremost. Secondly, concerning the soldiers, I need to let us know that the moment you enlist in the Nigerian army or any of the forces, you have given your life to government. There are no two ways about it. They are coming out to cry, blah, 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 shouldn't, shouldn't come up. That is one. You almost, you do, like they say in Yoruba, you do, you do, you <laughs> you'll be government picking. Uh, but but hold on, government? hold on, I'm coming down to this. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that, hold on. But hey. you see, training comes in, training mm. and equipment. You can't send someone to the battleground to the war front without giving him the precise equipment to fight with. Especially when you have information, intelligence, that the other man has some kind of firepower which will match yours, let alone more superior to yours. Well, uh, we only hear these stories. I have not gone there to see the kind of firepower they're using. But I want to say that um, the Nigerian army should look inwards now and go back to the drawing board to think of ways and models on what we can do, not just to defeat these guys, but to round them up. I think we've played so much lip service with security in Nigeria for so long a time. We have so many people around. Let them bring more experienced soldiers. Don't take to you, these guys who just come out from, uh, from college, from NDA or this thing. Go pick up some more you know, experienced guys and push them down there and give them a tax job and say, look, you know what? I give you three months, round this number, and let's go. It is possible. <laughs> now, is I, am, possible? I, I, I want to mm. mention here now, we, we spoke about technocrats. We are meant to have a satellite in this country. True or false? How effective is it? Oh, that is the issue. If we have a satel satellite, we spend, yeah, satellite, satellite yeah. one. If we spend so much money on this satellite, why can't this satellite give us beaming images and information in terms of coordinates where these people are? And if for any reason this satellite is not working, there is no shame in asking a sister nation, please, can you lend me some of your technology in, able, in, uh, in us being able to track these people coming in to this country, nip them on the board and round them up. Now, we don't hear of, of say, some of them, they do it for some visa for us. We won't hear, say, the government don't come outside at some point, don't come outside and talk, say, oh, we don't take over this region. And we go, as they talk, come, Boko Haram, them, they are giving us a counter video to say we are still here and we are still thriving. It can't be like saying that lip service with they hear just as you talk. Where they go talk from one side of their mouth, where they see the, we know, people, people, they come outside, they complain, say, they know they see the action. It's, a, it's one thing for you to come out and say we have defeated these people. It's a different thing for us to see, say, people are going, going back to those places. One of those regions were inside Bornu, where Boko Haram be take over, and the security operatives take over that, property, that, that area back, and people clear trying to go back to their regular lives, only for Boko Haram to go back to that same place, to cause more badness for them. And people now, they fear to even go back to those areas, to go and start their lives all over again in those places, because they fear, say, even where I did, for the IDP camp where I did, I am still not even secure. Where our security operators are supposed to cater to us, we don't hear of abuses. That one is even a story for another day. But looking at those insurgencies and looking at the states, what would they hear of? Uh, you don't come outside and talk one thing on satellites. 
even if you know good, we feel borrowed from our sister nations or people we get the technology. Why is it taking us so long? It is not rocket science. People know the solution. We will be normal Nigeria. We never do for government. Some people they propose very smart and important solution, but it can't be like say with they pour water on top stone, because the people where they collect taxpayers' money, where they collect salary every month, where they collect lesser than eh, one thousand percent higher than the minimum wage, are still there. Nobody has been sacked. Nobody has been called to order. When we hear, we go, yes, the government, they call the security heads them. But that is just where we see it. We don't see anybody being used as scapegoats. Yes, and that's why I mentioned here the issue of the politics of security versus the security of politics. Now, we need to say, no, enough is enough, and we expect so much. This is How we go talk, and we talk about by mouth. You see, the issue there on ground, you see, it's unfortunate that maturity has not been set in in the country. Um, you know, in security, there are certain things you can say, there are certain things you cannot say. But um, those who understand, understand what we're talking about, that there's high time we need to have a security summit. This security summit, it should not stop at just service chiefs. They should bring in ex-service chiefs, including people from the civilian populace who are in the business of security. Bring everybody together. I'm not campaigning for myself, but everybody who they think has some worth to contribute to the round table. And at the end of the day, they communicate what comes up at the end of the day. It could be a three-day retreat, security retreat summit, should now be implemented. A minister will be there, either the Minister of Interior or the Minister of Defense will be there in attendance from beginning to the end. Shukmaha, this is another money no. <laughs> that is going to cost. No, so don't no, forget no. Hold, it. Hold on. Confab reports. Hold on. I'm telling you, I'm, go I'm going somewhere. These are mm -hmm. not a group of politicians. These are security operatives. Mm. They're not coming there to drink tea. Mm. They're not politicians. These are security operatives coming down for a sole purpose. We are talking of our night with the country Nigeria, the sovereignty of this nation, which should be over the overriding position over any other thing. Now, you mentioned something here now. The truth is that we have the best army in Africa. We do? Yes, we do. You sure? Yes, I can tell you. Yeah. Now, but the issue is the willpower. We win awards everywhere. And Nigerian police win awards outside the country. Better than you with the foreign counterparts. I'm talking of outside Africa. But the question is the willpower to bring us out together, to galvanize us, to ensure we fight a common goal. I can assure you that if the governors, I use the word again, governors, coming back from the top, if the governors from the top is ready, both verbally and by action, telling the people and giving them the instruction, you must go there and win. You move the office of the Inspector General of Police down to the northeast. You move the office of the uh, Chief of Army Staff to the northeast, the Chief of Defense Staff to the northeast, Chief of Air Staff, all of them go to the northeast. Let them have a pinch of what is going on. While they are there, I'm telling you, they'll be more serious. Now, looking at the, my very last question, uh, for one of the things we happened for 2019, will be, will be the introduction of soldiers to the ask for identity cards yeah. of the average citizens for, for inside Nigeria. So you're saying right now, Operation a lot show of citizens positive identification. show positive identification. Thank you very much. Now, one of the, one of the highlights of 2019 will be here that time. And people will come outside, they ask questions, say, why would a soldier leave his place if he's supposed to be for battlefield? Come work out for the street of Las Gidi, work out go Ajegunde, work out go Makoko, Makoko, and all those other places. And just they see people for all the accident, show me your ID, show me your ID. What? How we go take no who get authentic ID? Because anybody can fake. Ah, uh -uh. <laughs> we have a lag bond there. We have so many areas where you can come and do your passport, get your ID card in five minutes. Should that have been the position of a military personnel to go on the streets to ask for ID cards? I think there was a breakdown in communication somewhere. That came or that arose in one of the propositions made by the military while combating the Northeast on the issue of positive identification of persons they were meeting there in the war front, that okay. they couldn't tell who was who unless they were to demand ID cards. Don't forget, it was voiced out by the military. And of course, the National Assembly gave the nod and said, yes, you can ask for positive identification. It did not mean in itself, literally, it's the army's job to begin to ask for national or what they call positive identification. It meant that wherever they are, they can ask for it. It's not their purpose to do so. But if there's need for it, they could ask for it. Most, in most countries, people walk around with their identification cards. But unfortunately, here in Nigeria, anybody can get an ID card. Yeah, you exactly. and I know that. So that defeats the, you know so it defeats defeats the, purpose. the purpose again. Now, but you see, there must be some form. We must start somewhere. And like I said earlier at the beginning of the program, the business of security is meant to be everybody's business. First and foremost, our borders are porous. <laughs> we must do something concerning our borders because mm. these people literally drive across the borders, come in, do what they want to do and go back. Remember I mentioned at the beginning when I spoke about local, national and international banditry. We refer to as international bandits. However, mm. they are insurgents. 
But we need to fortify our borders. If our borders are well fortified, it will make it difficult for people to drive in and drive out. That is the first thing. Once that is done and put in place, we can then start from there. Mm, thank you so much, Chuks Maha, a security practitioner. Uh, maybe not Sabi knows for inside the industry, but for people where they're out there, uh, we won't get more information about you, where they fit, um, how they fit to reach you. Where to be your social media handle? Well, they, they can reach me uh, using uh, sending me an email on watchdognigeria at yahoo.com. Watchdognigeria Nigeria at yahoo.com. Yahoo yahoo or straight using my Gmail account, chuksmaha55 at Chuks, Gmail. So chuksmaha, you can spell them. That's C-H-U-K-S-M-A-H-A -E 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 55 at Gmail. Dot com. Com. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming inside the studio. We wish you a very, very prosperous new year Thank for you, you and your much. family. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.